Yeah. yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. <laughs> This guy and I are at the first ever, first inaugural, yeah, first, first, first ever, yeah. PHP World, which is a conference built around the idea that with all the interoperability, with all the PHP renaissance that's going on, uh, diverse communities of PHP practitioners need to be talking with each other and need to mm -hmm. make friends and need to leave their beautiful islands, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So, Chris... Cornut is with me. Chris, how is your PHP world so far? Oh, it's been really good, actually. Um, managed to attend a couple of sessions that I probably wouldn't normally have ever heard, so it's good. What, what would that be? Um, mostly WordPress and Drupal stuff. I've messed with them a little bit in the past and haven't really got into it, but there's some interesting things happening in those communities. Yeah, we've officially declared Drupal a peninsula now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, with the symphony components. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, just reaching out there just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you can still control access to that end of the... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> nice. So, why don't you introduce yourself and, uh, and tell us what you do. Um, so I have been doing PHP development for 12, 13 years now, um, working in various industries. I've worked for natural gas, I've worked for advertising agency, all sorts of different stuff. Um, but more recently, I've been focusing in on security and application security kind of topics. Uh, for the past couple of years, I've been writing articles and doing presentations at conferences, all sorts of stuff. So it's good. And cool. I'm currently working in the global cybersecurity oh. group over at Hewlett Packard. Global cyber security. I know, it sounds very impressive. Do you have like patches and... We have t-shirts, or polo shirts, but okay. you know, that's about as close as it gets. Oh, all right. Yeah. How did you discover open source? Do you have a first open source memory? Um, so I actually started out with Perl and um, was doing more on the server side with that stuff, I mean, obviously, back in the day. Um, but then a friend of mine in college was like, hey, check out this PHP stuff. You know, and of course, coming from Perl, it was relatively easy to make the jump. You know, and uh, that was back in the PHP early three days. Wow! And uh, yeah, you know, showing my age a little bit, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it was good, and and I started getting into that. You know, he and I really started bouncing ideas off of each other, and really, you know, started working more into it. And a couple of years later, I started coming to conferences and getting to know people in the community. So it's been so, good. What made you stick with PHP? Um, probably the, uh, kind of two things, you know, the simplicity of it, you know, the ease, ease to get stuff done, um, but also the community. It's been really great, you know, it's, it's always been welcoming. Um, I don't think I've been to a conference where I haven't met a whole new group of people and, you know, started following them on Twitter and started, you know, sharing all sorts of stuff, so it's been good. If you had to pick one thing, uh, what's your favorite thing about PHP, the language? Um, the language itself, um, probably how flexible it is, um, which, you know, unfortunately sometimes it's downfall as well, but, um, no, it's, it's good. It's really easy to get everything, you know, set up and running and you can pack it together. You don't have to compile it or anything like that. So it's, it's nice. It's refreshing to work with after working with some other languages. Talk about being an open source software developer. Um... So it's interesting. Um, a couple of the projects that I've started have kind of taken off. Um, I actually was one of the original developers on Joined In. Okay. Um, that was kind of my baby for a little while. Um, and then it started getting too big. And <laughs> Joined In, speaker, audience, assessment, uh, community tool. Yeah, direct feedback kind of thing. Yeah, very popular in the broader PHP world. I didn't mm -hmm. know about it um, until I spoke at PHP Poland a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I don't have very much stuff on there at this point, but, but um, the feedback I've gotten actually from this, you know, from people here and on that platform has been really useful. Yeah, good. So thanks. I'd like to hear that, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it was um, after one of the conferences, I think it was like the last day, a couple of us were sitting around complaining about the paper forms. And, uh, you know, we were like, oh, there has to be a better way. And so within a week, you know, we had something. So, ah, that's a, t yeah. that's a typical uh, open source story. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was fun. Um, unfortunately, I ran out of time to be able to actually manage the project itself. I still try to contribute now and then, but sometimes it just doesn't happen, unfortunately. Yeah, I think uh, I think I ended up uh, counting today. There's 34 repos on GitHub under my account right now, from you know either doing pull requests or whatever else like that. So I think I either have entirely too much time on my hands for writing random code, or um, <laughs> yeah. I don't well, know. at least you keep yourself busy. Yes, yes, <laughs> I do. I uh, the um, I don't know if you've seen it, the phpdeveloper.org website. I've been running that for basically as long as I've been doing PHP. Ah. That's my, my baby right now. Chris, you're known in the PHP community as a security expert, and I guess you're not just known as one, but you're employed as one. I am. How did you end up in that specialty? Um, well, so security has kind of always been an interest of mine. Um, you know, even back when I first started PHP, when you know, nobody was really talking about application security. Um, you know, it was it was interesting. Uh, Chris Shiflett put out that first book that was mentioned earlier. Um, you know, read it cover to cover, and unfortunately, a lot of that st stuff is still relevant today. It's still problems. Um, but you know, a couple of years ago, I just finally decided that you know that was that was where I wanted to go. That was the niche I wanted to fill, and. Um, and so I, you know, learned as much as I possibly could. I, you know, I write articles, I speak at conferences, you know, about all that kind of stuff. And um, you know, it's it's been good. It's been very enlightening at times about all the stuff that's out there and all the problems. Um, but you know, I try to do my best to educate people and you know, write the most secure code I can. So. <laughs> all right. And when you're assessing other people's code, mm -hmm. how often does it happen that you? feel the deep physical need to stand up and dope slap somebody. <laughs> Unfortunately, pretty often, yeah, especially with PHP. It's, it's really, really easy to do really bad things with PHP. So there's, a, you know, Michelangelo mentioned in his talk earlier, just the number, the sheer number of bad things that are out on GitHub. And people go look at that stuff and they're like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. No, no, it's not. So, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen a few of those, and I will not link to any of them because that wouldn't do anyone any <laughs> yes. good. Please don't. Yes. You said earlier that you've been to some sessions, learned about some stuff that you wouldn't normally encounter mm -hmm. if you weren't at an all PHP event. Right. Drupal is also, as a, as a project, you know, over the last few years, really has stepped out of its comfort zone, mm -hmm. really bootstrapped. Uh, itself into an up-to-date version of PHP, um, object orientation, all this stuff. In fact, I see the boundaries of what is Drupal and what is not Drupal with Drupal 8 starting to dissolve. I think it's going to yeah. be a lot harder to define. So how do you see all this melding of the projects and, and the sharing of, of code? Um, it's actually really interesting. I remember when they first announced that uh, Drupal was shifting over to use some of the Symfony components and everything. I thought that was really an interesting move on the project's part, you know, because kind of growing up in the community, you know, those things kind of were the silos. You know, you never right. really heard much about what you're was going PHP on. You're a PHP BB guy. You're yeah. a Magento guy. You're a yeah. Drupal guy. You're a WordPress guy. Exactly, and uh, you know, and to hear them actually taking the steps to say, okay, we're we're going to do this interoperability thing. We this is what we want to do. What where we want the project to go. And to see it, you know, not just be like a couple of people, you know, hey, this one component's going to shift that way. It's the entire kind of ecosystem, it seems like, making that change. And it's really good. It's awesome to see. The PSR standards that make mm -hmm. this possible and Composer, which is such a catalyst yeah. now, right? They're not Drupal things. Mm -hmm. But is it fair to say that Drupal is sort of leading the way in the we're going to embrace whatever anyone else is doing well and we're going to concentrate on our specialties. Is, is Drupal providing a good example? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, in, in you know, Composer, it's still relatively recent kind of thing. But to see the project latch on to that and say, okay, this, this right here is the future of where PHP is going. You know, we need to integrate this or we're just going to be obsolete and, you know, stay in our own little silo for forever. So it's good to see. So where do you see this going now, this trend? 
Um, well, I mean, I hope to see it, you know, keep going, obviously. Um, you know, it's good to see various kinds of packages. You know, they're, they're coming up on the PHP side as kind of the standardized package for certain things. And I hope to see, you know, Drupal and, you know, maybe even the WordPress side come in and say, hey, this is, you know, this is good. We need to reuse this instead of trying to, you know, do the not invented here kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely hope to see it keep going. Right. And um, seeing people writing good libraries and then mm -hmm. Drupal implementations for them rather than writing a Drupal module that can only be used by Drupal. Right. Because then I think that lets us contribute and help everyone else mm -hmm. better because like, there's, then there's nothing stopping anyone doing their own implementations. Absolutely. Yep. In one sentence, uh -oh. tell us how to write secure PHP. Um, I can do it in four words. Really? <laughs> the main point. All right, all right, that's cool. Uh, I was trying to trip you up. Fil filter input, escape output. That's the biggest thing right there. Filter input, escape output. Yep. Now show everybody your tattoo of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should probably. <laughs> it's been in enough of my slides, yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could have it like Blues Brothers style. Yeah, actually, one hand probably, F-I-F-O, or F-E, yeah. <laughs> so security in a language. Mm -hmm is not dependent on the language, actually. It's really dependent on proper implementation. Yes. There are some language-specific things, obviously. There's always going to be language-specific things. But there's, you know, just kind of general security knowledge that's always good. You know, the, the filter input, escape output, that works for any language, not just PHP. Sure. Um, but, you know, the way that you do that, yeah, the implementation of that, yes, absolutely is, is more specific to the language itself. All right. So... Tell us three or four resources where we can get started learning about uh, writing good, secure PHP. Um, so it's not as specific to PHP, but there's always the OWASP stuff, um, OWASP.org. There's some great, great information on there. They actually have um, some PHP security cheat sheets on there and um, a PHP security project that's kind of... Uh, they had good intentions, but it's slow going now. You know, it hasn't been advancing as much as it should. Um, outside of that, um, I mean, I've, I've got some books out there. Um, the original book that I mentioned from Chris Shiflett is always a good one. Like I said, a lot of that stuff's still relevant. Um, trying to think of anything else. I mean, that, there's tons of resources out there. Good. I'm going to make a, a link list of some basic get started, yeah. you know, do your homework kind of thing yeah. for in, in the post for this podcast. Okay. Give us your shameless pitch. For what? I don't know. What are you doing? So buy my book? or <laughs> Buy my book, yeah. No, the Securing PHP book series. There's two of them right now. Um, the first one's complete. The second one is still kind of a work in progress. Um, the first one's a little bit more about just general security concepts. The second one is more the, the PHP-specific implementation of some of that. So, okay, fantastic. Yeah. Hey, it's great to meet you in person. Yeah. And, and thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Do you say corn, cor, cornut? Cornut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like the snacks. <laughs>